Today, we're gonna take some par readings and talk to a guy that knows way more about lighting than I do, the Reef Sensei Telegram. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. If you would like to support the channel, the best way to do that right now is to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. I record weekly videos about all aspects of the reefing hobby. Today, we're gonna do something that I am embarrassed to admit I have never done before. I am finally gonna get the PAR readings on each one of my tanks. PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation and is measured with a PAR meter. PAR meters measure the amount of light in a small area and then extrapolate that out to a usable number. I've been told to think of it like a nutritional value for the lights that you run in your system. The higher the PAR, the more energy there is for photosynthesis. Hey, I'm a science geek just like you and I can admit when I'm out of my league on things. And this is one of those moments. I'm not an expert by any means when it comes to lights, but one thing I love about this hobby is that if you have any questions, you can always reach out to people who know more than you to hopefully get some answers. He has a wealth of knowledge on all things reefing and beyond, but today, the Reef Sensei is going to teach us how to take proper par readings. Hey, I'm Jim, Telegram and Instagram and YouTube. We're gonna talk a little bit about light testing. I think testing your lights, knowing your photosynthetic active radiation, your PAR is just as important as your alkalinity. If you don't know your PAR, then you're just guessing how much light you're beaming down on top of your corals. Some of you know I'm all about the data. Without data, you don't know, and knowing is half the battle. PAR is the measure of photosynthetic active radiation. Basically, it's the intensity of the light that the zooxanthellae inside your coral can use to photosynthesize. Raise your hand if you are guilty of putting up lights and just kind of guessing what the right settings are or asking for somebody else's lighting schedule. Today, hopefully, we're gonna change that. For reference, over the frag tank, I'm running three AI Prime HDs and two T5 bulbs. It's a super ugly hybrid system. I mean, the white PVC pipe really sets it off, I think. And over the Llamas Lagoon, we have one Ecotech XR15 Radeon Gen 4 Pro. Obviously, we're gonna need a PAR meter. That's the device that's going to take your measurements. This is an Apogee MQ500 that I stole from my friend Shane. It's basically the same that you see on Bulk Resupply, those that you can rent, which are the MQ510. The difference is there's a multiplier built into the firmware of the 510, so the PAR meter takes better readings underwater. Ultimately, just having the readings is super helpful, multiplier or not. Another option is the Senai, which is also a measuring and monitoring device, but it functions as an awesome PAR meter, and for $210, it's a really good option. The meter that I'm using today is the Apogee MQ200. It's a good middle of the road PAR meter, and we'll get into it a little bit later in the video, but there are ways around not having to pay that much money, because let's be honest, not a lot of us are gonna need or have application for a PAR meter all the time. Okay, so before we use it, there's still a couple things to take into consideration, right? Two more things I wanna cover about a PAR meter. Have some sort of device that can hold the sensor underwater because the last thing you wanna do is go armpit deep in your tank, getting that sensor in the right place. Lastly, read the manual. Even if you just skim through it, it'll give you an understanding of the device and how to use it. Always, RTFM. Okay, so I've got the wand and I totally read the manual. So let's go ahead and take some readings. I think what's important to know when you're measuring PAR in a tank is the location of the measurement. And an easy way to do that, especially in a tank like this, is to use the frag racks as your grid. So this tank is set up with different zones. In the back, it's a little lower light. In the front, it's a little higher light based on the corals that I keep. Something else you might find helpful is to have a means of holding the meter itself. You don't want to drop this thing in the tank. I may speak from experience. Given that you may make lighting changes in the future, use that grid concept. Draw that out on a piece of paper, and as you capture your readings, write those numbers down. That way you'll have them for future reference. So as I'm taking the readings, I'm gonna go ahead and take notes 
This is the front view of the frag tank, and this is the top view of the frag tank, so I can get the depth measurements in there as well. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of work my way through here, going to the back, and you know, just kind of go in a grid fashion up and down until I get until I get all the readings. Some things I noticed right off the bat are how low some of these numbers are. At least I wasn't trying to fry my corals. I'm working my way through the tank and I'm trying not to disturb anything or knock anything over. I think ideally it would be nice to have someone holding the meter and recording the numbers as you call them out. It seems to be a little bit cumbersome and I can imagine if you've got a larger tank, you're gonna be having to maneuver a little bit more. So it might be good to have your significant other there to help you out. Thankfully, this tank isn't very deep, so the par from the surface to the bottom isn't going to vary as much as if you had a tank that was like three or four feet deep. I think the overall goal in the frag tank is to be able to color up some of this SPS. Given that most of it is zoanthids and LPS and easier stuff with minimal light requirements, it shouldn't be hard to adjust one or two lights to make that par value higher so that I can get some coloration out of the SPS. All right, so just been going through here. Uh, it doesn't look like I go over 200 ever. It stays pretty consistent across the board. So I've got nice, even, consistent lighting in the back. You've got less light in the middle is the most light. And on the front is uh, medium light. But it looks like I don't, I mean, I don't even come close to, the highest par is at the uh, Walt Disney here, it's 163. Um, obviously need to boost this up a little bit. Also another surprising result that I discovered that these two T5 bulbs that I've had up here for about a year really don't do much at all. And they put out maybe 20 to 25 par. I'm sure that they offer the corals some nutritional value, but at the same time, they're not really offering too much by way of par. All right, let's go ahead and do the Llamas Lagoon and we'll start in the back. Now the Lagoon was also a bit surprising. I know Radions are super powerful lights, so I have this one dialed down to 40% on a modified AV Plus program. I don't have any SPS in this tank, so lower light is more than okay, but I definitely have some Zoas reaching. I could probably afford to ramp up the lighting. The highest reading in this tank is 135 at the top of the rock structure. Now Jim says LPS is good between 100 and 200 par, and SPS is good anywhere between 200 and 350, and you can even go higher than 350, but acclimating is key there. And Bulk Reef Supply has verified those numbers over and over in some of their videos, so they're pretty widely accepted. I'll adjust the lighting to see where those numbers need to be, and then we'll go ahead and ramp those up over time. So that would be the next step. If you were gonna do this at home, uh, go ahead and add light in your apps. And uh, once you've gotten to that par level that you want, make sure to write down those settings and then over time you can ramp up to those. As I guess, these numbers are a little bit too low overall, especially if you're talking about coloring up Acropora and various types of SPS. And the corals in these tanks are by no means unhappy. There's nothing alarming going on in these systems that changing up the lighting is gonna make too significant of a change. So now that we've got the initial baseline numbers on both of the tanks, I'm gonna go back through and I'm going to raise up the levels of the lights to get the desired numbers in each category. And then I'll go ahead and adjust those numbers over time. I'm not gonna do this overnight. I'm not just gonna change all of the lighting settings. This is gonna be over about a month or two that we're gonna adjust the lighting and ramp it up in certain areas. So I'm also gonna move all of the sticks, all the acros and SPS to one general location. Uh, a, because it's higher flow, and B, because I can adjust that one light in particular. High flow, high light, usually a good recipe for some solid SPS. One thing I've learned the hard way is acclimating corals can be tricky. If you bring in new pieces and you don't know the par of where they were kept, put them in a lower light area. You know where those are because you have those on a grid and slowly move them to the location where you wanna keep them. Another thing is if you are changing lights, take your readings in a couple of locations, confirm your old grid readings are accurate and then swap the lights. Once the new lights are in place, set the par based on your readings from the original lights, maybe just a little bit lower, and then ramp those lights up to your new par target very slowly over weeks or months. Just take your time. 
I think overall, I'm most excited to see how the SPS reacts to the lighting changes over time. One of the most unique features of the Walt Disney Acropora is the abundance of colors that it has. And now that a lot of people have gotten their hands on a Walt Disney frag and grown it out, I think a lot of people are in the same boat as me where it's just straight up green. So I can't wait to see the purples and the yellows and the blues come out of this frag, fingers crossed. I wanna thank Jim or Telegram for making his way on the channel and agreeing to come and answer some questions that I had. Hopefully that helped you too. Thank you very much to Remy for including me in this video. It's awesome that uh, I, I'm given the opportunity to share what I've learned. I like knowing what's inside these lights. I like messing with them and taking readings and understanding their spectrum. Like I always say, knowing's half the battle. So thanks again. Happy reefing and be kind, everyone. Take care. Now you don't have to go out and buy a PAR meter. And honestly, it's not really that good of an investment to buy a PAR meter unless you're gonna rent it out to friends or something and make money back on your investment. But for the typical reefing hobbyist that isn't making a whole lot of lighting changes, a couple times here and there just to kind of check your PAR readings is probably enough. For that, Bulk Reef Supply actually rents out PAR meters. Or if you've got a local reef club that owns a PAR meter and they rent it out to members, that's a possibility. Also, a lot of local fish stores will have a PAR meter on hand that you can rent as well. I think the biggest takeaway with this little par reading sesh was now I actually know and have numbers to back up how my tank is lit. I get so many questions on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook about my lighting schedules and how I run my lights. And it, you know, to be honest, I'm like, here's my schedule. But the truth is like Telegram says, knowing is half the battle. You have to know how the light is in your tank for your conditions and for your corals. There are so many variables and so many things that go into this that it's hard to just blanket with one schedule. There's gonna have to be adjustments because the height of your light might be different than mine. The water clarity in your tank may be different than mine. On and on and on and on and on. And we'll have to do an update video in a couple months to see how everything is taken to the new lighting schedule. Follow me on Instagram if you don't yet at Bahama Llama Coral, and I'm sure I'll post some pictures up of the process. If you like today's episode, make sure to support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. Oh, and you may have noticed the shirt. I've been tinkering around with some t-shirt ideas, and with the help of the Pixel Reef on Instagram, we came up with this little gem right here. It's called the OG Sun Llama. It's just looking off into the distance, all like Hunger Games style, like. Can't wait to go scuba diving today. These are available for purchase. I know that Teespring is having some delays on shipping and production and all that stuff. So just when you place the order, if you do, take into consideration that it may be a little bit longer to get them. But once you do, if you do purchase them, make sure to take a picture of yourself wearing it and then send it to me on Instagram. Maybe I'll put you on the Instagram channel or put you into the next YouTube video. I put the link down in the description. So if you wanna support the channel, please feel free to pick one up. I'll link to the article below, but my good friend Metro Cat actually posted up a blog, an article about how the local fish store is doing during a pandemic. And as you may have guessed, she talked to one of the most influential local fish stores in the industry, Ocean State Aquatics, very own Scott Crow. You wanna talk about scary, try opening up a brand new, bigger, better, more livestock, more tanks, local fish store during a pandemic. Scott talks about it all in this article and it's great. He says, an LFS will always be the heart of the entire industry. It's actually what makes the industry. Yes, we hear over and over again that the LFS is on its way out. It's not. The LFS just has to evolve and we have to change. Scott Crow filled with that wisdom. Go check out all the photos and the videos on their Facebook page, their YouTube channel, and beyond of the brand new Ocean State Aquatics Superstore. It's fantastic. They've got so much stuff in there and you owe it to yourself to go get inspired and check it out. I don't really wanna make the rambling part of this video any longer, but I uh, just wanna say shout out to SpaceX and NASA. I feel like America and the world needed a win right now. So shout out to Bob and Doug, our astronauts that are up in space right now. Actually, Bob Bankin, fun fact, is from the St. Louis area and graduated from Washington University. So uh, we've got a little local tie with Mr. Bob Bankin. So really cool that they're up there, watch the whole thing. My wife looked over me, she said, are you crying? And I was like, no, I'm not crying. <laughs> totally cried.
Um, here's some more videos if you want to binge some more. And uh, make sure to check out the link for the shirt. And...